Hey, what up, boys, and welcome to your daily dose of copium, where we look at topics surrounding ashes of creation, but also a dash of parasocialism from our streams live over at twitch.tv forward slash Narkivus. This series wouldn't be possible without my beautiful patrons and coped out the wazoo Twitch subs, so sit back, relax, and grab yourself a... Yopa Kyola, because today we have a plethora of topics for you, starting with Ashes of Creation completing another major milestone, but also many more topics that are shown on the screen for you. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? Milestone 8, true. Mr. Steven Sharif has released a tweet um, the other day. Some pretty poggy stuff on my day off. At the end of the day, everyone's unanimously happy with the direction Ashes of Creation's going in. It's very poggies, but it's also very woggies. So, without further ado, for many people, development updates on Ashes is an opportunity to check in with the project's progress. It can be exciting and a fun experience to sit down and watch a dream take form and come together. Functionally, these touch points offer a way for players to provide constructive feedback and help validate direction. But there's another side to this process that perhaps goes unnoticed. Each milestone, Intrepid comes together and celebrates our accomplishments. We reflect on the work we've done towards delivering on our goals. This culminates into a day-long town hall where we review as a company our strengths and weaknesses. Introspectively, we carry forward changes we need to make in order to execute better and exemplify the things that worked well. Each town hall opens with a sizzle video of our community and their thoughts on what they saw us deliver. Some may not know it, but at Intrepid, our livestream day is watching and reading what you all think of our work. That is what motivates us and why I believe Intrepid will succeed. Congrats on the team on a very successful Milestone 8 completion. Onwards and forwards to Milestone 9. What up, boys? So we've just had what looks like, in my opinion, one of the best Ranger classes in the MMORPG genre. I got to see what I wanted from the Ranger archetype and then some, and it was everything that I was hoping for. True. Every single month since September, I've said the exact same thing, and that is this is the best live stream of the year. Uh, this is the best live stream of the year. I'm going to come out <laughs> and I'm just going to say it, it was a 10 for me. I think it's almost done. I don't know if I agree with that. There we go. Oh, I'm... That's really nice. That's what it's about right there. Oh. True. One of the things I really love about watching this system is how long caravan runs seem to take. These are not something to be taken lightheartedly. I can just imagine all the emergent gameplay that's going to come from this. The roleplay side of this is fucking awesome, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. right here like if i just pause the, the screen like if you ask me would i want to play a game like this the answer is 100 yes. percent. yes true truing truing what we are building is something truly special hey i can't wait for alpha 2 to drop and it's an absolute shit show <laughs> so i think milestone 8 was getting the combat fixed and finished that's what i think milestone 8 was all classes except summoner done and the combat and the stamina system the active blocking the dodging the sprinting and i think milestone 9 is getting the node system up running and finished and then milestone 10 will be the launch of alpha 2 that's what i think anyway that's just my opinion yeah i'm speculating right i'm speculating don't take what i say seriously i don't got a clue steven's uh abandoned me i'm a brand risk um help do you think that when we play the alpha 2 we should like just run around the areas and see if it's just empty everywhere. How much of the Alpha 2 do you think is just going to be empty space? And like, and there's not going to be like any content there really. Like percentage wise, how much of the Alpha 2 do you think is just going to be empty grassland and space? I reckon 70% of the map will be emptiness. Like this area here, like this is emptiness. I reckon it's going to be about 70% of the map. Wait, is that a controversial take? I think that's reasonable. Is that not reasonable? Only freeholds will be free space. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think I agree. 
Don't agree. What do I mean by empty? What I mean by empty is no mobs, no content, but the odd harvest node. That's what I mean by empty. Like no mobs, you know, some ambient mobs like a deer, you know, just random ambient mobs, but no actual content, no actual reason to be there. And then there'll be a splattering of like gathering nodes. All new MMOs are crowded. Yeah, do you reckon? Do you reckon? Uh, do you reckon modern MMOs are too content dense? It's okay to have space in between the content, especially in a game like Ashes of Creation, where there's a mount progression that allows players to, you know, spend time and money and guild resources to actually getting powerful, fast and travel focused mounts that reduce the time from going from A to B. So that empty space in between content, it adds to the to the mount progression because at the end of the day, it is a sandbox MMO and mounts in a sandbox MMO play a very different role to mounts in a theme park MMO because in theme park MMOs, mounts are more like trophies or rewards for doing you know theme park activities like killing a boss or completing an achievement whereas in a sandbox mounts they actually like count as progression so if you want to use like either arcade or black desert as examples i'm not really sure what the mounts were like in lineage so i'm not really going to talk about lineage but in arcade and bdo mounts had progression to them now i haven't got much experience with arcade in particular but i have got a lot of experience with bdo and the mounts in bdo are basically a whole game in on itself so you would spend months just focusing on mounts in bdo to get yourself a decent mount you'd go out you'd you'd find horse spawns you would collect the horses you would breed the horses you would level the horses up and then you would progress horses in tiers until eventually you get a powerful mount where you can run across the world because what bdo has it has a world or at least it did have a world that's very very similar to ashes of creation where there's no fast travel so your mount played a major role in your character's progression. So it was okay to stop progressing your character's gear, stop progressing your character's economy, to focus on a mount specifically. And it was very expected and it was very good to do that because, you know, in the long term, you're going to benefit more because now you can move around the world more conveniently and more a, a lot faster. The problem with BDO in the current year is that for some reason, they give away shit for free constantly they're giving away dream horses last i heard they're literally giving away dream horses dream horses used to be tier nine mounts i think so you breed and breed and breed and breed from tier one to tier two and you breed all the way up until you get to a tier eight and then you have to breed two tier eights together and then if you got super 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 lucky you would get a dream horse and that dream horse was like a whole league above a tier eight because it had special dream traits to it ashes of creation i feel like has a very similar gameplay loop when it comes to mounts just like how bdo had what was i talking about i was talking about like empty space in in ashes of creation's world say let, let, let's just be wild about it and say like 70 percent of the world is just basically empty space we defined empty space earlier as just foliage trees uh you know nice natural looking environments that have very minimal ambient mobs in there there's no real content there there's no quests there it's just like empty land that fills space in between content and I feel like mounts are going to play a major role in reducing the tedium from moving in that empty space. So although the world may feel empty at, at the beginning, I think mounts as a progression path is designed to reduce that and give the players a sense of progression. So, do you guys think that Animal Husbandry is going to exist in the launch of the Alpha 2? I'll tell you why I disagree. Uh, the reason why I, I do think Animal Husbandry is going to be there for the launch of Alpha 2 is because during the Artisan livestream, they showed this. Why would they show, why would they make these assets, like for the pen and, and all of this, if, if, if it wasn't going to be used for at least mounts and animal husbandry? Because not just this one, I also noticed during the node livestream, right? Check this out. 
What's this if it's not a stables? Uh, let me explain to you how a public farm worked in Arcage. In Arcage, there were set locations in all of the main city hubs or the questing hubs that had open space for like people to place animal husbandry and gathering related seedlings in. Do you think that Ashes of Creation are going to handle it slightly differently? So do you know how they're handling the bag systems differently where they're using slots? How they're handling the trade packs differently where they're using ui elements do you think the ashes of creation are also try are going to handle the animal husbandry and public farms differently to how arcage did and it's going to be more through the ui than it is through real life space because obviously you run into some obvious issues when you're dealing with real life space especially like in a, in a city hub like this because ruby brought it up earlier he said what if 50 people try to place it down well they can't right because it's first come first serve and this is something that's going to be explained in our stable systems and how mounts are counted for uh, later on. Um, we haven't gotten into an article about the stable systems yet or, or discussed really how they work, but generally you're going to have active mounts. The active mounts are determined based on you having that active mount as part of a slot within the stable that you're within the area of. And what that means is that mounts are relevant in battle. And if you lose your mount in battle, it, it is a detriment. There are ways for you to bring that mount back. There are active potions that you can have available to you to do fast resurrections, to reduce that cooldown potentially. And you can also interface with the stable itself if you want to swap that mount out with a different mount. So it just depends on the situation. It's, an, it's, it's a situational element. So then, because the stable systems are not online yet, do you reckon Alpha 2 will launch without animal husbandry? And the game will just have basic theme park style mounts to start with and then what will happen is later on when alpha 2 starts getting major updates they will introduce animal husbandry with the stable system and all the breeding systems and the progression and and gliding mounts etc etc that's blown my mind wait so so they're even completely redesigning how we think about mounts on the ground up it's like this system that's based off of stables and then you have an active slot in the stable and then it's if it dies, it dies, and you, you need a potion to bring it back to life, or you have to wait the cooldown. I mean, that's it's it's they're building off what existed in games like BDO and Arc Age, and they're they're bringing it into the current year. God, this is why I'm so excited about Ashes because it just seems like I think Stephen said it before in the past, right? The MMORPG genre has stagnated now for about 15 years and no game has tried to innovate or tried to push the genre forward it's just stagnated to this dog shit that's existed for 15 years where it's just this shallow gameplay loop that slowly over time got more and more and more monetized and now all games that release they're just either wow clones or they're just made by people that don't know what they're doing case in point Lost Ark, New World, Throne and Liberty. These people don't know what the fuck they're doing because they don't have the talent to push these systems into the current year. We're still using systems from games that existed 15 years ago. Why are we not modernizing these systems? And that feels like that's what Ashes of Creation's doing, is they're taking the MMORPG genre and they're making up for the last 15 years of stagnation. Is there any after this? Wait, so six months ago, we, have, we haven't seen a mount for six months. Interesting. I mean, the mount looks cool, right? The mount looks cool. I'm more interested in where does the animal come from? To me, it looks like Ashes of Creation's version of a zebra. So the desert, Badlands, maybe? A Badlands creature? It's a horse. Really? It's a horse? No fucking shot, dude. What the fuck is this? They say it's a scam, but we ain't falling for that. Ashes of Creation, yeah, we're bringing it back. From the ground up, we gon' build a brand new world Keep talking trash, but we gon' let it unfurl They calling us fools, saying we're throwing our cash away But we see the vision, baby, we gonna make it sway We unite in the game, forming guilds and alliances Turning haters into believers, breaking the silence Ashes rise up, we taking over the sea It's 
time to take a stand. Ooh, yeah. Shit, dude. Hey, yo. Hey, that's pretty fog. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And that's all the news I have for you today. Make sure you tune into the stream over at twitch.tv forward slash Narcoverse as the topics from these videos tend to come organically through links from our power social freaks in chat because they're high on copium.